Today we're going to talk about skin or integument. We want to gain a greater appreciation for the diversity of functions of skin and to be able to recognize the cells and the different structures in skin that make possible that functional diversity. Now what are the functions of skin? Uh, to protect against injury and desiccation, we are terrestrial beings because we have skin and we can keep hydrated to maintain water balance, to excrete or secrete substances, thermal regulation, it receives stimuli, temperature, pain, and pressure, and as a basis of recognition, it yields clues about one's health and their age. It also provides fat metabolism in the subcutaneous layer, the lower layers of the skin. Now remember the three key steps in combating infection. One of the main ones is breaking the cycle of transmission. And that's done by a physical barrier. In one case, it's the skin. Also, it can be part of the digestive tract uh, as well. Here we see two pieces of skin. One is thin skin. Uh, the epidermis is fairly thin compared to the thick skin, which epidermis is very thick. This is in the uh, soles of your feet or, or the underside of, of your hand. Anywhere where there's abrasion that goes on, it will make the skin uh, thicker uh, in those particular regions. If you would uh, use uh, utensils in a garden for a while it will make the skin a little thicker due to the mechanical stress it needed to resist but here we can see the epidermis the dermis and the subcutaneous layer in both of these thin skin a fairly thin epidermis dermis as we see there and thick skin fairly thick uh, epidermis dermis subcutaneous layer that we can see. In fact, we can see those. This is the epidermis on the either side. This is thick skin in both cases. And then where the epidermis and dermis interact, that's the papillary layer, papillary layer. And then the other connective tissue layer, the actual the part that gives the, the belt the thickness is the dermis, uh, is the reticular layer. And then below that you have the subcutaneous fat cells, and here we can see fat cells and through their sweat glands, uh, there's this presenting corpuscle that we can see there. That was thick skin. In thin skin, we can see a similar type thing. This is the papillary layer, which is not as elaborate on thin skin as it is in thick skin. And then, uh, so the papillary layer is up through there and then the reticulum layer, as you can see there. Now, regardless of which type of skin we have, uh, we have two well, multiple layers. The top layer on the outside is dry, uh, composed of dead, denucleated cells, flattened cells. That's a stratum corneum. Uh, below the stratum corneum is a corneum, it's a stratum lucidum. But then the next layer that actually has cells in it is a stratum granulosum. Uh, and that has the keratin hyaline granules inside there. And that's what we see as the granules. Below that uh, is the stratum spinosum. And it has spines because of the tonal filaments or the desmosomes. And the very basal layer in through there is the stratum basal, or the stratum general vitivum, they would say. Uh, and that's the source of the renewal of the cells that differentiate from the base and ultimately are sloughed off at the top uh, as differentiated cells. And here we can see those in this drawing, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, right in through there, uh, stratum uh, basal, uh, right at the bottom through there. And then you have the uh, spinosum, uh, stratum granulosum, I should say, stratum spinosum, and a stratum basal is right in through here at the very basal layer. So you have a granulosum layer, uh, which is this keratin hyaline granules, and that's the last cell that you can see the nucleus in, then it differentiates, and the nucleus uh, has dissolved. 
and we can see those layers, stratum corneum, uh, stratum granulosum, you can see the uh, keratin hyaline granules there very nicely in nuclei, stratum spinosum, indeed you can see the spines, you can see the individual uh, spines uh, which are the desmosomal connection between adjacent cells. And here we can see uh, um, thin skin showing you uh, the different interaction between the epidermis and the dermis, uh, the spinosum basal, spinosum granulosum, um, uh, corneum and corneum, astratum corneum at the bottom. Here at the hand, we can see the fingerprints uh, at the bottom of a finger. Uh, this is the fat cells, uh, looks like chicken wire. Uh, this is a reticulum layer, the papillary layer, uh, the epidermis and the dermis, as we can see. Now, if you would take the epidermis and remove it from the dermis and look underneath the bottom, this is what you would see. Uh, in it, you would see the, uh, the stratum basal, and in the stratum basal, you have the melanocytes. And melanocyte is a dendritic cell. It sends out dendritic processes. So this is the space where the dermis would remove from in through there, and then these are actually what they call the reedy pegs. Uh, and here we can see it again. You can see at the bottom of uh, the epidermis, we can see all these cells, and you can see how it's a dendritic cell. This is a melanocyte. This is for a dopa uh, reaction showing you uh, where the location of enzymes uh, to make melanin granules. And remember that the melanin granules are passed from the melanocyte to the, uh, to the keratinocytes with a cytokine secretion, passing the melanin granules from melanocytes to keratinocytes. And here we can see the dendritic processes, uh, which would be ultimately pinching off parts of the ends of it and making those granules inside uh, the cells. So again, we have stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum uh, spinosum, and the basal. If we looked at that with electron micrograph that we have, uh, 8G, this is the dermis and through there, and this is the epidermis with the skin. Stratum corneum, stratum granulosum. You can see the Carolina Highland granules in through there. Uh, and then you can see something longer Han cell processes through there. Uh, the uh, keratinocytes, uh, as we see in through there. Uh, and uh, at the base, we uh, have one cell. This is a, a melanocyte in through that doesn't make desmosomal connections with the other ones and we can identify it by that scene. Also we can see the desmosomal connections and that would be making the spines or the stratum spinosum. Again we can see the melanocyte in through there and you can actually see some of the dendritic processes coming up from there. This is a dermis uh, with uh, collagen bundles in through there and note that uh, the um, keratinocytes that uh, are on the basal, they have a capping. So the melanin granules that were produced by the melanocyte and passed to the keratinocytes uh, put that melanin uh, in the capping just over the nucleus to protect the nucleus from ultraviolet light is why you have the melanin granules. Here we see some abdominal skin which is uh, basically a thin skin, uh, stratum corneum, uh, stratum spinosum, <coughs> stratum granulosum uh, in through here, and then the stratum uh, base sal as well. Now there's three types of granules in the keratinocytes. One is melanin granules, we've already talked about that, that's produced by the, by the melanocytes and passed on to the keratinocytes by cytokine secretion. There's also a membrane cooling granules. Some people might call it lamella granules because they're lamellar structures uh, in shape. The granules, this is waterproofing. This is what, uh, it goes in between uh, the, the cells of the stratum granulosum. These are the ones that produces that cement uh, in between adjacent cells of the stratum 
so it's a stratum uh, granul uh, stratum granulosum, and then uh, the stratum corneum, you have the keratin hyaline granules. So here's a keratin hyaline granules forming, and it's only the keratin that persists in a stratum corneum. So there's three types of granules. You have the uh, myelin granules, the membrane coating granules, and the keratin hyaline granules, which ultimately, when all the organelles dissolve in the cell, that's the only component that are in the cells in the stratum corneum. If you come on down a little deeper, you can see that the um, epithelium goes down uh, from the surface down in through there into the sweat gland. And this is what a sweat gland looks like. Uh, however, this is the way you will see it with a series of cuts through the duct as well as cuts through uh, the secretory portion itself. The secretory portion is more light staining. Uh, the duct itself is more eosinophilic uh, and it is stratified cuboidal uh, in nature. So this is kind of the way we see it, several cuts through the glands or uh, the ducts uh, themselves. And of course those go from the glands and these ducts come all the way up and actually empty onto the surface. And in this case, it's emptying onto the fingerprints, and that's why you would leave your fingerprints because it's really uh, from the sweat glands. Here we can see these uh, sweat ducts going in all the way out to the outside. Uh, if you look at another finger, we can see again the, the uh, sweat glands, the lighter standing sweat glands, and then. Uh, the more eosinophilic uh, ducts uh, as well. There's presenting corpuscles uh, also uh, in through there. Again, we can see uh, presenting corpuscles in another piece of skin. These are fingerprints in through there, and here we see um, the sweat glands uh, down deep within the uh, cutaneous, subcutaneous region. Uh, so here we have uh, abdominal skin, even though they do have some, some sweat glands, is not as remarkable as certain other areas. Uh, here we can see uh, some hair of a scalp. Uh, so we see hair follicles uh, coming through uh, the, the dermis, uh, from the dermis area deep at the inside, but all this is epidermis. So the hair follicle itself is epidermis, as well as the sweat glands they are too. So coming with the hair follicle, we have sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland is a holocrine type secretion gland. Whenever it produces content, kind of a waxy content, it discharges uh, into the hair follicle itself. So it discharges into the follicle and that's what gives your hair a greasy uh, uh, texture uh, to the hair uh, if you have it wash it for a few days. Also there's a, a rectal pili muscle this muscle, erector pili muscle, it pulls down from the surface of the skin and pulls the hair follicle up. If you've ever seen a cat with the hair stuck up, it's because it pulls the hair up in the case of upset or, or if in case of, of a coldness, uh, a cow will pull the hair up. And in fact, we have the same type of thing, but we see it more as chill bumps or cold bumps because this may cause an indentation of the surface when it's trying to pull the hair follicle out for heat. Now, uh, here we see a follicles, but they're not straight. They are curved. And in fact, if you have curly hair, you will have curly hair follicles. Instead of being straight hair, it would be straight follicles. Curly hair is curly follicles, as you see, uh, see there. But here we see the sebaceous glands. I uh, really can't see a rectal pili muscle uh, in, in this view. Here we see a nice rector uh, pili muscle in through there, sebaceous gland, hair follicles, um, uh, epidermis in through there, dermis, so this would be papillary re region and reticulum region in through there. It's hair follicles going all the way down deep into the uh, hypodermis. So we have thick skin and thin skin Usually the thick skin does not have hair. You don't have hair on the bottom of your hands or the soles of your feet. So at the sole of the foot, you can see a very thick skin. This is some, a monkey skin, I think it is. 
uh, it's a stratum corneum, uh, 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 all the way to there, stratum uh, granulosum, stratum spinosum, and a stratum basal, and through here. Again, we can see that the papillary region, as well as the reticulum region, sweat glands, fat cells, stratum corneum in this thick skin. So this is skin with hair follicles and an out part of a lip, and then as it comes on around, it actually goes, it's still stratified squamous epithelium like it was on the outside, but now it's non-cretinized. And so where this was the uh, dermis, epidermis, uh, this is uh, epithelium now, uh, and it's lamina propria on this side. This is a muscle there uh, controlling, a uh, skeletal muscle controlling a lip. If you come inside the tongue, uh, you have different types of uh, papillae. You have uh, fungiform papillae, like little uh, uh, squares in through there. Uh, also, you have filiform papillae, which you don't have taste buds, uh, and they actually grip the food to be able to put it under your teeth. There's fungiform, uh, different type of papillae that's located there. Here we have the filiform, which actually grab the food and allow you to uh, to move the food. So this is uh, epithelium, and this would be lamina propria in through there, and then this is muscle, skeletal muscle, to facilitate you moving your tongue around. Another place that we have uh, skin-like materials, a covering, uh, is a conjunctiva, the white of the eye, as you see in through there, and it goes all the way in through, we can see conjunctiva in through there, sometimes they have goblet cells located uh, in the conjunctiva. So here we have the sclera with a conjunctiva going right uh, over there, this is epithelium in through the connective tissue of the sclera, and then we have the epithelium of the corneum, corneum epithelium uh, that, that we see there, uh, with that conjunctiva skin, it covers the entire body. And here we see in the mammary gland, uh, remember uh, we saw the sebaceous glands uh, in the regular skin. There's also sebaceous glands in the nipple of the mammary gland as well. Uh, and you can see the epidermis and then the connective tissue and, and we can see uh, there's glands in through there. In fact, there's to the openings out through here, there's 16 or 20 uh, lactiferous ducts that bring the milk out from deep within the gland out to the outside. So like a cow has a single opening, where, uh, but in humans it's multiple little openings. Uh, also uh, in the uh, dermis, uh, there is smooth muscle bundles, and here we can see one of those smooth muscle bundles here and here, and that's what uh, causes a nipple to become uh, erect whenever uh, is exposed to a cold environment. Deep within the mammary gland, however, you have mostly fat cells for reserve space, uh, but here we can see the secretory uh, comportions. All this is epithelium from the, from the surface. Uh, uh, so this is uh, epithelium in skin giving rise to these mammary glands. And the purpose uh, of this is, of course, is milk secretion. And here you can see uh, apricot secretion of the milk, milk droplets in through there. And here we can see some of the glands, uh, these cells or these cells in through there. Uh, and also casein would be produced milk, which is what makes milk white. And the purpose of this is to nourishment uh, of the offspring, very handy. Uh, in the case of mammals, to be able to have the offspring to be able to uh, have food uh, constantly, even though the mother may eat uh, intermittently. So we looked at the functional diversity of skin today. It protects, it maintains water balance, it excretes and secretes milk, thermoregulation, receives stimuli, and fat metabolism.